Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. What I'd like to take a look at today is how you can use um, the assembly templates to create your parts. Some of the things that I've found to make your process a little bit easier is if you're creating an assembly and you already have parts existing, you can use those as reference to move on and make more parts. So right now, as you can see along the bottom, I've got a couple, couple files open, one a part file and one this assembly file that we're working on. So if I want to create a new part, um, what I can do is use this desktop. So I'm just going to create some legs for this, this desk. And we're going to use the frame generator, which is a design accelerator. It keeps things simple and it makes things very quick. So I'm going to come back to the assemble tab. And instead of placing another part, I want to use the create icon. And I'm going to call this uh, frame, let's we'll call it frame for now. And we'll hit OK. And it's asking me uh, what plane do you want to start this, this part file on. So I'm just going to use the bottom of my desk. And you'll notice that my model browser has now shifted. And now I'm looking at the same interface I would be if I was looking at um, a part file. So let's come back to this part file. You'll see that's the exact same thing except for one item here which is this return button so when I'm done creating this part I'll hit the return and it'll take me back into the assembly so let's uh, I think we already chose so we want to create a 2d sketch so it's going to ask us again to choose a plane that you want to work on and it's going to be this this plane right here so it does a, a little flip for me and as I was mentioning, we can use existing geometry with the project geometry tools from our, uh, well, essentially from our tabletop. So I'm just going to grab some of these lines because I'm going to want to use those. And let's grab one more right there. So what I'm going to do is use this offset tool. Actually, before I do that, I want to grab all of this line work here and I'm just going to make that construction lines because these lines won't reference any geometry for the part. So now that I have those as construction lines, you'll notice that it's no longer uh, engaged. I'm going to come to the offset tool and I'm just going to offset some quick lines off of these straight lines here. When this is all said and done, I'm going to give them all a uniform dimension and I'll show you a quick trick for that as well. So let's dimension these all, or dimension all of them, sorry. So all I'm doing is applying a quick dimension to the outside, and I'm not really giving it any value right now. But we'll go back and we'll use one value for all of these. Okay, so now that they all have a dimension, if I come back to this dimension here, you'll notice that it's D0. I want this to actually be 2, 2 inches. So when I click yes, or the check mark, it gives me that 2 inches exact. Now I can come into the rest of these and simply type in D0, or I can double click on them and then click on my previous dimension and it will give me that same functional dimension. So I'm just going to go around and do that quick. And again, you can come back and click any of these because they're all going to be referencing that same dimension anyway. So now these are all two inches away from the exterior of this uh, desktop. So that's great. I got everything I need. Um, but I'm just going to trim these up because I'm going to be using uh, this, this bit of line work to create frame members. Another thing that I, I didn't think before was actually I'm going to want to make this uh, a closed loop so I can extrude this. This will make creating the frame much easier. So now I've got a closed loop with um, two inches exposure on all, all sides. So now that that's all said and done I'm going to hit finish sketch and now I can use the extrude function to create the basis for my frame. So I'm going to say that that is 30, well, let's say 37. I want it to be 
38 inches all together. So I'll click OK. And now that we have that piece in there, you can see that I still have this grayed out over here on my model browser. If I click return, then you'll see the full assembly, what we're looking at. So as I said before, we're going to come back to the design tab and use this insert frame. And what this does is it starts up the content center and it lets us use pre-developed content to create frame members. So you'll notice that the orientation in the insert dialog box is set to the top. So I like that for the top members. These are going to be um, applied to the bottom, to the bottom of our tabletop. So notice I'm using the edges of this extrusion that we used earlier. So I think we want one more here and that's good for those members. Now I want to use this edge to create some legs. So what I'm going to do is change the orientation of my tube to the center. Now you can change these to, uh, if you wanted pipe, you could use square tubing, you could use rectangular tubing, uh, S-shape, you can do all kinds of great stuff with this and you can also change the material. So for the time being we'll just leave it as mild steel but I'm going to change this back to that uh, square tubing. We'll choose the size again, which was the two, and our orientation is correct. So let's just add some legs here quickly. I want one more back here, and we'll say OK. And we'll give it a second, and it creates these nice frame members for us. So now, as you can see, I don't really need the uh, the frame members. Oh, and again, these have uh, these have gone too far up, so we're gonna have to remove those and redo those. But let's just uh, let's just take a look at this quickly. So I have these members that need to go, and those are probably the first ones. So I'm gonna select those here in this list of frames, and you'll see them highlight as I go along. So I have all the top members selected. I'm just going to right click in here and say delete with frame generator and I should still have the legs. Okay, perfect. So that said, let's come back to insert frame and see if we can't get this right. And this is probably due to where I placed the plane when I first started this. So the profile for my, my part, it probably starts at the top. So, uh, no big deal. Let's go to the bottom instead and see how this works. If I select this line, let's see where it places it. And that's, that's where we actually want it. So, let's just take a quick look at that in orthographic. There we go. That's, that's what we're after. So, the view, to, the view cube is also a great tool for this because it actually lets me take a look at these things um, very easily. I can grab the line that I need or the edge. I think there's just a couple more back here we'll put in quick. Okay, so I believe that's what we're after. So let's hit OK and we'll get those four new frames put in. Okay, again, so now that that's said and done, we have our frames in place. We no longer need this initial part that we created. So let's locate that here in our model tree. That's this one. So when I highlight it, you can see that it highlights in the model space. I'm just going to right click and come down to visibility and uncheck that. Now, the last thing I want to do here is make sure that my frame members make sense. So what we can do is use some of these great tools. Uh, we're going to use this one called Notch. And what it allows me to do is select the two members and have them cut as though you would see in real life. So whether they're going to weld this together or assemble it after the fact, we're going to get the exact representation of how this would be built. So I'm just coming in, I'm selecting two members that I need to be cut together, and you're noticing that these lines change up a little bit. 
just slightly. And that's essentially where the stiffener at the top is going to be going to be cut. So do two more notches and we'll be all done. Oh, maybe a couple more here. Apply that one. Apply that one. Okay, so I think we have the frame for our desk all set up. <clears throat> now, last thing, maybe you don't want these members to be mild steel. Maybe you want to come and change that. That's no problem. You should be able to come in, uh, select the entire frame, right click, and if you go to uh, well, actually, let's come up here to the Appearance Override. So if we come up to Appearance Overrides, we can choose from a whole list of options. And let's just try and find a, a black paint. A flaked satin black. That'll look great. Okay, so now we've got some nice painted legs for this. And if we go into uh, our view, we can come to the visual style, get a little bit better look at this, and change it to realistic, which enables the ray tracing. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you get a very good idea as to how this is going to look when it's created. So, uh, those are some tools with the frame generator and uh, how you can create new parts in the assembly interface. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned a little bit of something, and hope you come back for some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye now.